So today we're going to be talking to uh, Natasha Morales and Natasha is a senior researcher um, in behavioral sciences, but by training, she's also an economist and the institute she works in was developed from a psychology institute. So there's a lot of multidisciplinary uh, research and we're going to be talking about how she's recently submitted two research papers. Now she's working on a third one that's going to be submitted soon. And we'll dive a little bit deeper to some of the strategies that allowed Natasha to publish those papers so that, you know, you can also, if you're watching this video, you can use similar strategies. So thanks for coming on, Natasha. Thank you, Marek. Nice to be here. Yeah. Can you maybe just first, like, let us know, like, a little bit, like, what your research papers are about? What's your research and what, what you're interested in? Yes, well, uh, I am a social economist and uh, I was mainly working on uh, research on child, uh, youth, teenagers and family and gender too. Uh, the institute uh, here in La Paz, Bolivia is one of the main institutes doing this kind of research. So as you said, uh, it started with uh, psychology uh, studies, but uh, nowadays it's a very multidisciplinary studies. Uh, so this is one of the things that are, uh, I like more <laughs> because um, we, we share a lot of knowledge every day we learn uh, between each other. We work in qualitative and quantitative uh, research and we try to uh, do uh, several kind of innovation and methodologies. Uh, but also because of the subject, uh, we receive funds from the NGOs. And the NGOs uh, always want to have a, a report that is written in a very easy language uh, that everybody can understand. Uh, we were writing in this sense a lot of reports uh, to mainly uh, for incidence purposes. So NGOs, we take our knowledge and uh, we do something to change the situation of child, the rights of child, of the families. And uh, uh, here in Bolivia, they work in networks. So we are associated with a, in a network of NGOs working on uh, child rights. And uh, so the task for me was to also uh, fulfill a requirement for the university to write in an academic way. Uh, since I was written in a very easy language and a, a very um, friendly reports, uh, so I had to switch to do it more um, uh, to, to, to change this knowledge for to publish in academic reviews. Uh, and uh, since I, I started, but I, I found it uh, difficult because of the format, because it's more strict, because it's more rigid. Uh, so I decided to, to take the, the course with uh, you, Marek. Uh, and uh, that was uh, really very useful because I think uh, without the course, I couldn't uh, do this switch no, to, uh, to start. And, and what, was, what was difficult about this switch from, let's say, maybe more, yeah, like, quote unquote, easier language that you were writing reports for NGOs? And what, what was difficult about this switch to like more academic language and writing research papers? Well, um, mainly at uh, first insecurity. <laughs> I thought it was very difficult. Also the language, because English is not my language. So I read and, and I, I write English, but I feel very insecure. So uh, when I started the course, I said, well, it's not so so terrible. <laughs> you give us a lot of tips that could um, easily start and not be blocked. You know, for example, well, if you can't start with the introduction, start with the methodology. So that's it's a more easygoing, more relaxed. Okay, a methodology I know very well, so I can start with that. Then pass to another part of the of the document. Then I didn't know how to do one the flow. For example, I use these uh, keywords that help to write in a coherent way, and so on. Got it. So in terms of like the last thing that you mentioned was like that the flow was difficult. And I think a lot of people struggle with this, like mm. sometimes they call it like a coherent story in a research paper or flow or whatever you want to call it. So like, well, what did you learn or like, what, what did you do to like understand it? What tips would you give to people who struggle with having coherent flow in the paper? 
Well, one of the most useful uh, techniques <laughs> was the uh, pyramid. <laughs> I start with the pyramid, but I think that was a key <laughs> issue. And I never thought like about... Like the inverted pyramid. Uh, yes, exactly. Yes. So uh, I really use these templates that you give us. And, and it was uh, help to uh, mainly to put in order the, the ideas. No? So then when you have clear ideas put in order, then it's easy to, to rewrite in, in the current way. So that um, even it seems very obvious, it's not obvious. I mean, uh, I was uh, write, writing other kind of reports, as I say, but this is not the logic. So uh, and also I think English helps because English is more accurate sometimes. Uh, in Spanish, it uh, could be more uh, like uh, turning away and doing many, using many words to say one concept, but in English is really accurate. So also I, I work on the vocabulary and the vocabulary that is used in the uh, paper, similar papers that I, I was writing. So uh, I take notes on, on this uh, vocabulary and I say, well, this is keywords. So I have to, to reuse it in my paper because it will help to understand the language on whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. No, so the, the, the pyramid, like, uh, how would you explain it? How, how does it work? Like for people who are listening, the inverted pyramid concept, what's that? Like, what's the principle behind it? Yeah, but we you have to to um, to to in the first phrase you have to put the 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 general idea, then second general idea, the third second idea. I mean that explain the the the, the main idea. The, the main idea, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, in English, it's very clear uh, when you put it in that way. And that I think that is very key uh, for starting any paragraph. I mean, I used to write not in this order. I mean, to put some a lot of ideas in a paragraph. <laughs> and uh, that uh, uh, to put in order, it makes a really difference when you read it again. So that was a really good uh, tips for, for, for the writing. If you want to work with me more personally to regularly publish research papers in high impact journals, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation. The link is right below this video. Uh, we're going to meet one-to-one -one and discuss what your current challenges are, what you want to achieve, and see if this is something that we can help you with. Yeah, that's that's probably one of the things that I that I, that you hear me say all the time. One paragraph, one main idea. You probably yes. hear that feedback a lot. Yes, and also the templates uh, you give us, uh, it's very useful. I, I didn't uh, take uh, too much attention at the beginning, so I was not using this. But then when I uh, be, I was blocked and I say I can't start, so I said, well, I go to the course and what we have there. And I saw the templates, I said, oh, that's very useful. So I started to put in these Excel sheets um, or in, in the order that you give us, and that helped a lot. And I guess with, with those templates, like a lot of people tell me, but like, hey, Marek, but like different fields are very different. So how can you have a template? So how, how did it work for you? Because I mean, obviously I'm in teaching English or in linguistics, you're in, uh, yes. you know, behavioral sciences, maybe psychology. How, how did you manage to use those templates and how, how were they No, useful? no, these templates were very useful because I did, uh, well, two research that were very, very uh, completely different uh, in, I mean, in the approach, in the methodology. One was uh, really qualitative and it was my first research uh, uh, qualitative with a lot of tes um, testimonials and everything. And the other was really quantitative. We did a model and uh, with the survey data and everything, uh, and uh, it works perfectly. I mean, the, uh, the template works for these two kind of research that were really different uh, the same way, so. Cool, yeah, I, I find that sometimes like people focus a lot on like those small differences that of course exist between fields, but like the underlying logic and the template below it 
very often is almost like almost the same in a lot of different um, fields. Yes, yes. Well, then then you have some doubts, no? Um, uh, if uh, this is uh, for this kind of study, it could be this form or not. But then we had the opportunity to ask in the course when uh, we have this discussion uh, or to write in the chat. I had this feedback and now I have other doubts, so I will I, I come back with questions. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Questions, questions are good. And of course, yeah, uh, no matter how good the template is, we need to adjust it and personalize it to you. So I think a lot of that as well we did through yeah, the weekly discussions and the feedback on your papers, no? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, that and was also good to receive feedback uh, to the papers and to have these links. And go to the course uh, three and check this part of the course to review the part of your paper. So that that was very useful too, because I know uh, as, so I can understand what uh, you are talking about. No. Yeah. Absolutely. And you mentioned that when you started, you didn't feel very secure. You know, you, you lacked in confidence about writing research papers. I mean, so how, how do you feel now, like looking forward to the rest of 2023 in terms of writing papers? How how do you feel? Uh, well, I, I um, we had a discussion here at the Institute. Uh, everybody presented their papers and I received a very good, good feedback. Uh, they say that the paper was very good, the research was very interesting and well written. Uh, so uh, that gave me the security that uh, it's, uh, it's the start point to write more and in this way. Uh, uh, so I want to say I worked very hard, <laughs> very, very hard, even on weekends. And I get stuck in one paragraph or one idea maybe this kind of uh, papers uh, that is the way uh, the effort we have to put in and the result is is a good paper yeah and so for you the result was you've you've submitted two papers and another one you're going to submit it soon yes uh, since we started the course i i wrote three papers and uh, i uh, don't have any answer yet uh, because you know the this review takes time <laughs> but sure. I hope I will receive a positive answer <laughs> yeah no it's it's very good going from like you know not feeling secure about it and then submitting three papers I think that's um that's excellent absolutely mm -hmm. yes yeah. yeah fantastic so what what's you know what's sort of tips would you give to people who like maybe are in a similar situation you know they're working full-time at the university and they kind of have to publish papers what what advice do you have for them like one key thing that you think like has worked well for you that other people might use well uh, I, I will advise to to be patient to work uh, hard take attention they are in the course to take attention or all these templates that we pass and we say yeah, no i am not going to use this but they are very useful then enjoy i think this is the key <laughs> because yeah. if it's too too hard it's not but if you enter to the to the you no know, to the um, generating this knowledge and you read it and you discover new knowledge and it's passion passionate so you have to enjoy Absolutely. I think I think that's a that's a great tip. And on, and on my side, I would emphasize as well the, the work hard part, because as you said, and I can I can see that you've worked very hard for those three papers. And yeah, there is no sometimes I think people maybe expect like a magic pill that, you know, they will sign up for a course or they will, I don't know, do something and then everything will be fantastic. But it's a lot of your hard work. So also, yeah, congratulations on that. 
Thank you. <laughs> if you want to work with me more personally to regularly publish research papers in high impact journals, then schedule a free one to one consultation. The link is right below this video. Uh, we're going to meet one to one and discuss what your current challenges are, what you want to achieve, and see if this is something that we can help you with.